presented Frankenstein, or The Man or the Monster, in our auditorium. Hasten to the villa and busy yourselves in preparations of the festival in which I wish to give to this genius Frankenstein. A first kid interest, right? When you're trying to do something and the school hasn't had it, you want to find something that everybody likes. So I chose that. And then second, um, I did my senior thesis in the college on philosophy and Frankenstein. So I kind of know the text and have a personal connection to it. Frankenstein shall be the first, and this child is at hand. I played the doctor, not the, not the monster, the doctor, Victor Frankenstein. The time has come. The glorious moment has arrived. Now Frankenstein, achieve the mighty work. Gain that best of victory, a victory over the grave. There was like this whole bunch of pressure because I was like, what if I fumble on stage? And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go with the flow. And then knowing that my family was out there watching me was just motivating. Courage, right, your son. Let that big soul with exultation. Enjoy it. The stage was like laid out, and the monster had the blanket over it. I was supposed to say my line, and then I have to walk like far away from it. I have to walk really slowly and lift the sheet off really slowly to give it that like full like effect. The breath of life now swells its bosom. It was kind of scary. Um, I, I felt like I was shaking a lot because this is the first time that the audience was gonna see me. And I was wearing makeup too, so I was scared that the makeup was gonna smudge or something. But it didn't, we found a way to like make it on top of my head instead of like on my face. And I think it was really cool. Merciful heaven, and has the fondest visions of my fancy awakened but to this. And I like the joke is everyone thinks the monster is like huge and big, but it's just Aubrey, she's tiny. A form of horror, which I dare scarcely to look upon. It's Mr. Park came up to me and said, you know, you can say yes or no, but it, I think it would be really iconic if there was a short creature with a lot of power. And I said, sure. Oh, horror, horror, let me fly this dreadful monster of my own creation. Well, I thought it'd be really great to have that dichotomy where people think it's something huge and monstrous and then it's something small. Ah, oh, it is here. My mom searched for some costume ideas and we found them one that we really liked where it was all ripped and there were chains and stuff like that. I thought that we should make me look really pale and then she tried to make me look really tired and put like brown around my eyes. And then I just worked a lot on facial expressions. And then I told her, everything has to be done through your face and all of your, all your movements. So those have to be huge and pronounced. And she slayed it. <laughs> ah, what dreadful gigantic creature is this? <laughs> I was stage manager. Basically, it's kind of like telling people where their spots are um, getting people's call out lines straight when they need a line, making people be quiet when we're backstage. Act one, scene eight, when the ballet dancers were out there. Because one of them forgot their tutu and had to be at that straight. Miss Staten, who the sixth grade math teacher here, come to me and said, hey, I've done dance before. If you need anything, let me know. And I said, oh, great. We have a ballet scene that we'd like to do. It's in the script. Can you go ahead and choreograph it? And she spent time, worked with the kids on it. And a lot of those people in that ballet have never danced before. And you couldn't tell it. They did such a great job. So I played Rosora, the prince's sister. I get to scream and faint. Julia, my turn. I get to faint and I get to be put in a chair and then I have to pretend like I'm crying, which is fun. And I also played the small child. She had to walk on her knees. She had knee pads on. They're very comfortable. They're my mom's sewing knee pads. She let me borrow them. I do get to scream many times. 
I had to run forward, which is not very easy in my knee pads, look at the monster and then scream and then run again around the chair to wake her up. So like, Aubrey, well, the monster, she had to pretend to like push me really hard. So like I fell back and then once I landed, I pushed my arms back so I could slide. A lot of that was just like telling them it's okay to have some fun on the stage and, and just like walking them through how to actually fall without hurting themselves. <laughs> but they got really comfortable with it and it was just like just making sure they knew, hey, be big and bold with it because that's what's going to make the audience really laugh and respond like they did. One of the things that I really loved the most was to Mr. Green, who's our art teacher here. He got his sixth grade classes to create two posters for us and kind of just making it a, a school-wide event as much as possible. Faithful creatures, eternal providence, receive my thanks. It was really fun and I met a lot of good people and great people out of my grade and I made a lot of friends. I'm really happy with in theater. I didn't know that I had that in me. I thought I was just like the more science-y and math kid, and then as soon as I got introduced to the play, I was like, man, this is really fun. I should do this from now on. I love theater. It's something that's a passion of mine, and just want to make sure that these kids have an opportunity to do it, because I think it's really great for them to experience something, and I plan on doing it for many years.